All right, the purpose of this video is to practice and review mixed nom nomenclature for molecular compounds, covalent compounds that is, ionic compounds, and this will be type 1, type 2 binary compounds, as well as compounds with complex ions, and acids. To uh, make best use of this, I'd suggest pausing the video and trying the questions yourself and then checking your answers. It would be best if you could do it without referring to your data booklet with the simple and complex ions listed there, but if you have to, you can look at that um, for some help. But for a test or exam, be sure that you're prepared um, to do this in your head. So let's jump in. When you're naming compounds like this, you'd like to first, it's very important when you see a formula, to decide am I looking at a molecular compound, covalent, an ionic compound, or an acid. Molecular compounds will have just non-metals in their formulas. And we remember when you see a periodic table, the non-metals are on the right-hand side of this heavy staircase. If you want to see an ionic compound, you'll notice that they almost always start with a metal, or sometimes they'll start with a complex cation. Ammonium is the most common one of those, NH4 positive. So if you see a metal or NH4 positive at the start of a formula, you're looking at an ionic compound. Acids almost always start with hydrogen ions. Okay? Their formulas will start with hydrogen. So let's jump in. The first question, BASO4, so this says barium at the beginning of the formula. That means it's a metal, so this is an ionic compound. Naming ionic compounds, you simply name the cation, so barium, and then the anion, in this case, sulfate, sulfite, rather. Now, sometimes you have to watch out for type 2 cations. Those are the metal cations with more than one charge. In that case, you'd need to put a Roman numeral in the middle. Barium is an alkaline earth metal. Its charge is always 2 positive, so there's no need for a Roman numeral. Second question starts with ammonium. Ammonium, again, is a complex cation, so therefore this is an ionic compound. So go ahead and name the cation followed by the anion. So ammonium and PO4 I recognize as a complex ion. It's phosphate. Okay. PBr5. Phosphorus is a nonmetal, and bromine is a nonmetal. Therefore, this compound is a molecular compound or covalent. Molecular compounds, we need to use prefixes when we're naming them because there are no ions in the formula. So with one phosphorus at the beginning of the formula of the formula, we'll just say phosphorus. Okay, there's a prefix mono, which means one, but you don't use that prefix mono for the first element in a formula. Five bromines, the prefix for five is penta, so penta bromide. Now notice that the first element, phosphorus, was named as though it were a cation. It's not, but it's named as though it were a cation. Its name is the same as on the periodic table. While the second element is named as though it were an anion, bromide, okay, even though it's not an anion. MgSO4, magnesium is a metal, so this is an ionic compound. So I'm just going to name the metal first, magnesium. And then sulfate is a complex ion. Notice when you know these formulas, the complex ions, it's very easy to do this. I'm not constantly having to check out the list in my data booklet. CaO, calcium is a metal, and so far we've only seen type 1 metals where they have only one charge. So this is an ionic compound, calcium oxide. This next one starts with hydrogen which is a clue that it's likely going to be an acid. Now, the hydrogen here is bonded to phosphate, which means this is not a binary acid. 
binary acids have just two elements, hydrogen bonded to one other element, and their names would be hydro something ic acid. In this case, we have an oxy acid where the, ana the anion ends in 8 phosphate. So the name now is phosphoric acid. If your complex ion ends in 8, you simply add the suffix ic, so phosphate, phosphoric, and then add acid at the end. This next example is again an ionic compound. It starts with a metal, sodium. So we'll just name the cation, sodium. And then the anion is a complex ion, which we recognize, I hope, is dichromate. Number eight, again, ionic compound, because it starts with a metal. So we'll name the, the cation, magnesium and then the anion oxide. This next example is not ionic. It starts with a nonmetal and is bonded to a nonmetal, so this is covalent or molecular. So we need to use those prefixes again. When there's only one element one atom of the first element, we don't use the prefix mono, so we'll just say sulfur. Three oxygens, so trioxide. Okay, the prefixes like tri and di and tetra, etc., are used only in covalent molecular compounds like this. There's one uh, other type which is not on this worksheet, I don't think. It's a hydrated ionic compounds where those same prefixes are used to tell how many water molecules are attached. But none of these examples are hydrates. Number 10, is an ionic compound again. It starts with a metal, and for the first time we're seeing a type 2 cation, copper. Copper has more than one charge. It can be plus 1 or it can be plus 2, and so we're going to have to say that in a name. I see that it's got two nitrates bonded to it, and nitrate, I know, has a charge of minus 1. Since there's two nitrates bonded to the one copper, this copper's charge must be 2 positive. Therefore, I'm going to call this copper Roman numeral 2 because its charge was 2 positive, and then nitrate. So for type 2 cations, the metal cations with more than one charge, you have to include a Roman numeral after the name of the metal. The Roman numeral tells us the charge on the metal. Number 11 starts with hydrogen and therefore we're likely looking at an acid. Now this is an interesting case. It's a binary acid, so hydrogen bonded to one other element, in this case iodine. If it were gaseous, if this were a G in the brackets, gas, then we would not name this as an acid. We would just call it hydrogen iodide. We'd name it as a, almost like a covalent compound, but with no prefixes. Since there's AQ here, aqueous, it means this is dissolved in water, and therefore we name it as an acid. That little rule, gases and aqueous, only applies to binary acids. When they're gases, you name them hydrogen iodide. If they're aqueous, you name them as acids. So the acid name of a, of a binary acid begins with hydro, and then we see iodine, so hydro iodic, okay, binary acids always end with ic, like that, and acid. Okay, so a binary acid's name starts with hydro, and then a root, which comes from the anion, ic, and then acid. N2O, two nonmetals, so this is a molecular compound. We're going to need prefixes to describe the name. Two nitrogens, so dinitrogen and one oxide and one atom on the second atom we need to use a prefix so monoxide okay mono means one so two nitrogens dinitrogen one oxygen monoxide number 13 
Manganese is again a, a metal, so this is an ionic compound. Manganese is a type 2 cation, so we have to say what its charge is with a Roman numeral. The oxygen is minus 2, so the manganese must be plus 2 in this compound. So the name would be manganese, Roman numeral 2, because that's its charge, and then oxide. Next we have another acid. It's aqueous and binary, so its name will be hydro, and then sulfur becomes sulfuric, and then acid. Arsenic, bonded to oxygen, those are both non-metals, looking at a periodic table. So this is a molecular compound. We're going to need prefixes for both elements. Two arsenics and five oxygens. So the prefix for two would be di, so di-arsenic. And for five oxygens, we'll say pentaoxide or pentoxide. We'll contract that. Fe2O3, iron and oxygen, those are both, that's a metal bonded to a non-metal, so this is an ionic compound again. And iron is a type 2 cation. It has more than one charge. So we need a Roman numeral to tell us the charge. The oxygens are minus 2 each, and there's 3 of them. So 3 times minus 2, there's negative 6 charge in the oxygens. That means there has to be positive 6 charge in the iron to cancel that out. That positive 6 charge is divided over 2 iron atoms, so each iron must have been plus 3. Double check that. 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. I've got that right. So this name would be iron, Roman numeral 3, because that's its charge, and oxide. Okay, again, we need the Roman numeral because this cation has more than one charge. Iron could be either plus 3, like we see here, or it can be plus 2, and that's in our data booklet. Next, we have another acid. I see that because it starts with hydrogen. And it's an oxy acid, not binary. Okay, it's got hydrogen bonded to a complex ion. The complex ion in this case, ClO, is hypochlorite. So this complex ion's name ends in ite. So the suffix for this acid will be O-U-S, us. So hypochlorite was the ion, so hypo chlorus, and then acid. Okay, remember that hydro is only used for binary acids. N2O3 is a covalent compound again, two non-metal elements bonded to each other. So with prefixes in the name, dinitrogen, and three oxygens, trioxide. HF. I'm tempted to say that this is a binary acid, but then I notice the gas. So I'm going to name this not as an acid, I'm going to name it as a gas, and so its name will simply be hydrogen fluoride. Now technically we would also accept their hydrogen monofluoride, but it would most often be called just hydrogen fluoride. If this were aqueous, dissolved in water, then we would name it as an acid. And for a binary acid, the name would have been hydrofluoric acid. This next one is an acid. Hydrogen bonded to oxalate ion. Oxalate ends in A-T-E. So the acid name will have the suffix IC. So oxalate becomes oxalic acid. Now we're going to go the other way around. Given the name, write the formulas. And again, pause the video and try it yourself. Okay, so number 21, hydrobromic acid. 
So hydrobromic acid tells me that this was a binary acid. Hydrobromic means the hydrogen ions are bonded to Br minus. Bromide is a halogen on the periodic table, so its charge is minus one. Since hydrogens are plus one, the formula will just be HBr. And to emphasize that it was an acid, I'll put it with Aq beside it, aqueous. And that's needed only for binary acids, right? Chromium-3 carbonate. So this is an ionic compound, a metal with a telling me its charge. It must have been a type 2 cation. So this was chromium-3+. And carbonate is a complex ion, CO3-2-. Since the chromium is 3 positive and the ca carbonate 2 minus, to cancel the charges out, I'll need two of the chromiums and three of the carbonates. So Cr2, two of the chromiums. And complex ions, when we have more than one, we put them in brackets, and then we indicate how many outside the bracket. So two chromiums and three carbonates. Magnesium sulfide is again an ionic compound. There's a metal, non-metal. Magnesium, I know from a periodic table, is an alkaline earth metal with a charge of two positive. And sulfide is underneath oxygen, so its charge is two minus. Two plus and two minus, MgS would be the formula, canceling out those charges. Iodine trichloride. Either because I notice iodine and chlorine are both non-metals, or because the I see prefixes. I recognize that this is an, a covalent compound or molecular, so there are no ions in it. Therefore, the formula comes directly from the name. Iodine, so there must be one iodine in the formula. Trichloride, there must be three chlorines, so ICl3. Lithium hydride, lithium's a metal, alkali metal actually, so its charge is plus one. Hydride is hydrogen. Now, hydrogen would usually be plus one, it's in the first column in the periodic table, but it's sort of like carbon. It has one electron in its first orbit, so sometimes it can lose that one electron and become plus one, but sometimes it can gain an electron and be minus one. Carbon has that same problem with four valence electrons. It can gain four or lose four to look like a noble gas. So this case must be H minus because it's bonded to the positive lithium ion. And LiH will be the formula because a plus one cancels a minus one. Ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium is a complex cation, so this is an ionic compound, NH4 positive, and hydroxide is a complex anion, OH minus, plus one and minus one, so NH4OH will be the formula. Calcium chloride is ionic, calcium is a metal and chloride is a nonmetal, so calcium being an alkaline earth metal is two positive, chloride being a halogen, is minus one. Two plus and minus one will need two chlorides to cancel the calcium's charge, so CaCl2. Hydroselenic acid. Clearly it's an acid, and with hydro at the beginning, it must be a binary acid. So there's hydrogen ion bonded to one other element, in this case, selenium. Now, selenium is in the same family as oxygen, so its charge must be two minus. And since the hydrogen is one positive, we need two hydrogens to bond to that selenium. So H2SE. Iron two nitride is a metal and non-metal, so it's ionic. The iron here is type two, which is why there's a Roman numeral so its charge must be two positive. That Roman numeral is telling me the charge. Nitride is N, and looking at a periodic table, its charge is three minus. And so iron's two positive, nitrogen's three minus. We need three of the irons and two of the nitrogens to get equal amounts of positive and negative. 
2 and 3 both go into 6 as the lowest common multiple. So 3 irons, Fe3, and 2 nitrides, N2. Aluminum hydroxide, ionic. Aluminum's a metal and hydroxide's a complex ion. So Al3+, looking where aluminum is on the periodic table, it had three valence electrons, so it loses them to become three positive. Hydroxide, OH minus. It's a complex ion that I've memorized. I'll need three of those hydroxides to cancel the charge on the one aluminum. So AlOH3. Tin 2 fluoride. Tin is a metal. And it's a type 2 ion with the Roman numeral, so SN2 positive. Fluoride is a halogen, so F minus. SNF2. Sulfur tetrachloride. This must be a covalent compound. I see two nonmetals. I also see prefixes in the name. So I'm going to get the formula directly from the name. Sulfur, so there's one sulfur tetrachloride, there must be four chlorides, or chlorine atoms. Mercury 2 iodide, mercury is Hg, and mercury 2 means Hg2+. Iodide is a halogen, so I-, minus, and therefore HgI2. Diphosphorus pentaoxide, is clearly covalent or molecular with all those prefixes, but phosphorus and oxygen are nonmetals, another clue. So the name gives us the formula P2 diphosphorus pentoxide O5. Sulfurous acid. There's no hydro at the beginning, so this must be a hydrogen ion bonded to a complex ion. Since the name ends in us, sulfurous acid, the complex ion must have ended in ite. So this was the sulfite ion, which is SO3, 2 minus. Two hydrogens will be needed to cancel that negative charge, so H2SO3. Lead 2 nitrate, ionic, metal, and a complex ion. Lead here is 2 positive and nitrate NO3 minus. So PB and two nitrates, so we'll put nitrate in brackets with a two subscript. Dihydrogen monoxide is a bit of a trick, that's a strange name for water. Two hydrogens, one oxygen, H2O. Sodium oxalate, ionic. Sodium is an alkali metal. And a positive oxalate is C2O4, 2 minus. It's a complex ion, so we'll need two sodiums to cancel out that charge, and a 2 C2O4. Perchloric acid. There's no hydro, so this is not a binary acid. It must have hydrogen bonded to a complex ion. Since the ions the acid name ends in ick, the, acid, the ion's name must have ended in eight. So this was the perchlorate ion, which is ClO4 minus. Plus one minus one, this is just HClO4. And finally, chlorous acid. Again, there's no hydro, so this is not a binary acid. It must have hydrogen with a complex ion. Chlorus means the ion was chlorite, ClO2 minus. So plus one minus one, HClO2. So this worksheet did a good job of reviewing mixed nomenclature for covalent compounds, ionic compounds, and acids. One thing that was not shown on this, on this worksheet, however, were um, hydrated compounds. So be sure you're familiar with the names and formulas of hydrated compounds. One simple example maybe of each, you can try this yourself. Give a name for this compound here. Okay. 
So there's a hydrated compound because it has this dot 7H2O, a hydrated ionic compound. It's ionic because there's a metal bonded to a complex ion. So this would be magnesium sulfate. And then seven water molecules are associated with every MgSO4 within the crystal structure. So we'll add the name hepta, which is the prefix meaning seven, and then hydrate, hydrate for water. So magnesium sulfate heptahydrate would be the name of that compound. And you should be able to go back and forth. So there's a good overview of nomenclature. Hope that was a good review for you. Um, if there's anything that doesn't make sense to you, if you've identified a certain type of naming for which you have problems, be sure you come and get some extra help on that.